All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Ben Mala Podcast. Oh, my bad, guys. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Ben Mala Podcast, where we'll answer your real estate, life, and whatever questions you got for us. We have Ben Mala here. And then we're also doing a super chat. So send in whatever super chats you want and we'll answer your questions live on air. And then if you want a fast pass, click in the video link description. And you can get, um, you can talk to us right now, live on air. Join in, join in. I don't think my mic's working. working. There it goes. Join us in. Why are we here? Well, you didn't ask for it, but we're doing it. You are here. We worked all day and now we're going to hang out and try to help some folks out. You know, today in the news, Blah, 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 blah. It's a bunch of blah, blah, blah. A jittery U.S. may use sophisticated weaponry to bring down balloons. You can blow a balloon up with a freaking dart. What the hell? You got to even set a plane up there. They got a giant dart gun they can shoot up in the air. Oh, my God. This world's going cuckoo. Anyway, we're popping balloons, baby. Popping balloons. Spy balloons. Maybe they're from outer space. Maybe it's not China. You ever think of that? Oh, oh no, it's China. Okay. We look at you. We watch you. We send balloon to watch you. All right. What are we doing tonight? We're here. Oh, my God. So, Ben, we got uh, some fast pass people here. Fast pass. You know, because real estate is very challenging right now. All right. You got to work for a living. All right, because the market hasn't realized it's time for prices to come down. That's called a recession. Go out and have recess. Bring your price down. What do you got for us tonight? Who do we got? How's it going, Ben? My name's Dave. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Excellent. Yeah. Um, wanted to kind of run a few things by you. Um, kind of see. Things. We'll give you one thing to run by. I <laughs> all time, the whole night to waste on you. I got my dinner waiting. All right, sounds good. I'll be quick. Um, so I uh, had some rental properties. Um, well, I had I had two I had two office buildings in California that I sold in 2021. Thank God. Yes, I got the hell out of there. Um, so I did a 1031 exchange and then I actually bought three rental property, three single family homes in Texas. Um, so I have, they're all paid off, all three of them, um, generating about, I want to, well, I have two that are rented out. I have one that I'm still trying to get rented out right now. We just had some bad luck with some tenants moving in. Um, but my question to you is, you know, I've been waiting to rent this, this third unit out. And do you think it'd be better to maybe let it, you know, try to sell the house and get into something else? And if so, what do you think would be a better option for me? Where do you live? California? No, I live in Arizona. You live in Arizona. You had all these buildings just sold in California. And now you bought three houses in Texas. Yep. All right. Anyway, the point is this. How much money do you have tied up in these three houses? Almost a million dollars. A million dollars. And all right, let's say the third one is rented. Mm-hmm. What are you getting for that million bucks you got? Uh, about sixty five, sixty five hundred a month. Yeah. All right, so you're getting seventy grand a year. Does that include your taxes, your insurance, and God forbid you got to fix anything and leasing fees? And who's managing it? You manage it yourself. I manage myself. Yes. All right, so you know if you're getting like a seven, you know, seven and a half percent return. I mean, that's okay. But that's all you're going to get. You're not going to know unless these houses are going to be worth a whole bunch of more money, which I doubt in this market. I mean, you parked it. How much money did you save in tax? Um, about How much was your gain on your property your office buildings you sold? It was about 300000 Gain? Yeah. So you saved sixty grand. You know, yeah. I don't know. And you walked away with a million in cash? It was about a little under a million. Yeah, I got uh, I got. Know? I don't I know. Got, I got What's three. In the bank right now? Uh, I got about 150 in the bank. I would have. I would have paid the goddamn 60 grand on the 300 and kept a million bucks in the bank. You yeah. know, a million bucks right now. You're sticking on money market, even if you get your 45 grand a year. Well, I mean, uh, until you find what you wanted. But I mean, you saved the tax. Now you're stuck in the houses, and there you go. I mean, you're not going to be able. To, what are you, you going to do now? You ain't got no big money in the bank. You know, you're going to have to borrow against these houses to raise money to do another deal. What are you going to do? So, I mean, I mainly did this for my mom because I'm trying to retire her. 
Um, so this is She's money that's going with uh, income from the houses and having the money tied up there, right? Well, let me put it in perspective. Um, it was yeah, please, the whole, put it in perspective. <laughs> so it was about a million dollars. Two, it was two office buildings, and they were generating me about thirty-eight to four thousand a month in income. So you jumped um, up now to to double that almost. Almost All doubled. Right. Yeah. You take care of your mother. Very good. Now she's got yeah. some income. That's very. It's great. Definitely. And then um, right. I don't. I, I one more quick thing. I'll let you go. Um. Uh. When you I know get house rented is a question. She ain't getting that big money as she should right now. So we have two of them rented out. We have two of them rented out um, for the past three months. This other one, we've just had a lot of people with really bad credit scores coming through. And, is it in a um, rough area? Yeah, it's not in the – it's in a eight. rough – Go Section 8. Yeah. Go Section 8 because even if they got bad credit or whatever, who cares? As long as you, you, know, you check them out, make sure they're good people. A nice working-class family needs a little subsidization in their life. Uh, is that a word? I just made that word up. Subsidization, uh, you know, and uh, you know, it's uh, that's what I did, you know, because the, the, you get your money deposited in her account every month from the housing authority. And, they, and with a house, because of the utility costs, the tenant probably won't pay you nothing because, you know, they got to allow for the utilities and stuff uh, on their income. So, you know, I would definitely list it on section eight and look for a really good tenant. How many bedroom house is it? It's four beds. Four beds. Holy mackerel. That could be in some good money. You know, but at least see what the market is. There's a website to go to. It used to be called Go Section 8. Check a look at housing authority in that area and see what the FMRs are. You know what FMRs are? I don't. Fair market rate. Oh, they okay. establish a rate for every single area, you know, and they'll tell you what you can get for that house. At least look it up online. What county is it in? Texas where? What county? Abilene. You know? Who? Abilene, Texas. Abilene. Is that the county or is that the city? That's the city. So All right, well, I'm look not at the city, look at the county, and really see what your options are. It might be a good way for you to have a nice long-term tenant, you know, and just, you know, try to stick to working-class families that just don't make a lot of money, and they need help from the housing authority. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. What else you got? That's it? Uh, I got a bunch of stuff, but I don't want to waste all your on, time. Speed out. This ain't no consultant <laughs> bid. <laughs> um, so I just pur I'm purchasing a house out here um, in Arizona, but um, – I'm not closing till May. Um, now, I rates just jumped up today. What are you gonna do with the house? Live in it? Yeah, live in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How so, old are you? Twenty? Uh, older twenties, like twenty nine, almost. So you really you need the house? I mean, right now I live in a two bedroom condo and I'm paying close to the same amount I'm gonna pay for this for my mortgage. All you right, know? you can't go out and find a duplex, triplex, fourplex, and and, and be and, and do something smart for a year or two at least. You can't See, live like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could. There's just not a lot. There's not a How lot of tribe condo right now. Almost three thousand. Holy shit, three thousand a month, even with today's interest rate. You can't find a duplex or a triplex, and then you can maybe live for free or cut that three thousand down to a thousand or fifteen hundred. You know, yeah. saving money is making money. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, you know, I don't know. You got wife, you got kids, you got all that stuff. Yeah, I got a girlfriend that. Hopefully one day get married and stuff like that. Well, we one split day, the rent, but not like now. <laughs> in a year, maybe. Why don't you get your feet wet? Imagine, imagine if you found yourself a fourplex, and the fourplex helps qualify. The rent in the fourplex qualifies for the mortgage, so you don't qualify by yourself. You just got to come up with twenty percent down, or mm -hmm. maybe FHA less. You never were in the military, were you? No. I mean, you know, I would at least look. Did you at least look and see of all the fourplexes and triplexes and even duplexes on the market? Because imagine if you could save fifteen hundred dollars a month or three thousand a month. I mean, yeah. imagine, imagine you saving three thousand a month. The other three units paying all the bills. Holy shit! You save thirty six thousand that year. Yeah. All right. right. Do cool. what you want. Go buy the house. Get it ready for your <laughs> girlfriend. And you know, if that's what you want to do. Do it if you can afford it. But I appreciate your age, it. you know, do what you got to do. What else? Come on. We ain't got all night to play with you. All right. We got super chat. So thank you, Titan Nick, for the first super chat of the night. Uh, looking good, big fella. Not so big anymore. Not so big. That's because I had a lot of gum work done. My wife ain't feeding me. I'm stressing because I'm paying out all this extra goddamn money to bank every month because I was too stupid to fix my rate a year ago. It's a lot of reasons why I'm losing weight, but it ain't good reasons. All right, shout out uh, JJW for, for the second Super Chat of the night. We appreciate it. Shout out to all the growth investors out there. All the growth investors, shout out. Growth, growth, growth. Always want to grow. 
as long as you you know some things you don't want to grow like a fungus or something ugly i'm just kidding go ahead what do you got all right, uh, shout out Michat Wasala. Thank you for the super chat. Hi, Ben. Greetings from Poland. Poland? When will you guys they organize? They got internet in Poland? When will you... They got YouTube in Poland? Yes, sir. They got Potube. <laughs> we go on Potube. He said, when will you guys organize the next life facility? Oh, we're going to organize the next life facility. Well, right now is the season. The hotels are full. I don't need you right now. But I will need everybody come around April when it dies off from spring break so probably in april we're gonna do something maybe we'll do it on april fool's day but uh thanks for asking and we'll post it out there we'll plant something in april in tampa because you know i gotta schlep all the way to fort lauderdale i gotta put up with vincent and all that no thanks i'll just stay right here near my house so stop booking your flights look for flights coming here in april what else we got a caller we have a caller hello how are you hi ben how are you Pretty good. What's going on? Um, Can't be that guy's lips ain't moving. That I'm looking at. I'm uh, <laughs> You're a calling from Spain, actually. Spain. We're yeah. gonna call this the international. Uh, so it's yes. so it's one a.m. in the morning right now. One, mo- one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. The party don't start till one in the morning, baby. <laughs> Spain. I want to go to Spain. My wife wants to go there. But so she, give me give me a call when you come. Spanish. I don't think she speaks the same Spanish. It's probably similar. My family came from Spain back in the 1400s. All right. Spanish Inquisition. Mm. All right. So what's up? ¿Qué pasa? Yeah. Uh, I'm what's just up? wondering. ¿Qué pasa is um, Spanish? If you're in Spain, you wouldn't say ¿Qué pasa, would you? I actually don't know Spanish. I'm, I'm uh, originally from Estonia, so... I've been living here for uh, on and off for a you couple of Estonia? years. Estonia, isn't that where the um, Flintstones are from? Estonia, <laughs> probably. Estonia. Where is Estonia? Isn't that no? Near- it's Baltics. It's Baltic countries. Estonia, Baltic, Latvia, Lithuania. Baltics. Yeah, you guys are protecting us. So very good. Yeah. Well, somebody needs to come protect us. But anyway, <laughs> so what's up? How are you? What's going on? I don't speak uh, St- Estonian. <clears throat> That's all right. I'm not even stoned. Uh, Is that where you came from, Estonia? Everybody stoned there? Yeah. All more right. stoned in Spain. Okay. What's up? Uh, just wondering a couple of questions. Uh, how big cash portion of the portfolio you're using usually? What do you say? Do you, ha- do you have like a cash cash portion uh, percentage that you're following when you're, when you're uh, managing your assets? What kind of portions? Translate cash. for cash. 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 You always want to have a lot of cash, you know. So percentage-wise, how much do you normally Depends have? On what you want to do. If you, you know, how much do you want to go out and have a, a stash for emergency for to go out and buy something? It's like if I need, if I think I want to have the ability to buy a $100 million deal, right? Hmm. I better have at least a 20 million to put down on it. And I better have about another 20 million to cushion and cover my ass. So it's all, it's all relative. It depends. But you on don't keep like a safety, money. safety cushion yes, for yes, cash. Yes. Yes. Always have reserves. Always have money stashed away in case COVID comes or who the hell knows what happens. Interest rates go up, you know? Yeah. You always should have a good percentage of money that can cover you. You know, God forbid the shit hits the fan. But it depends on the shit that you're worried about. You know, you what do you want? Like ten percent, twenty percent, or listen, you should have as much as you can stashed away in things that are making you money. Like I don't know about in Spain, but here what we do is we stash our cash in investments that will sit there and make money for us, like tax free municipal bonds, even our money market accounts paying four and a half percent. I mean, you know, the money should be put to work. And then if you need to you can borrow against it. You don't have to use it. And then, you know, you can pay it back once you made the money. But, I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, in a perfect world where you can really sleep at night is when you have enough cash to pay off the bank. When you got enough cash in a bank, I mean, but to, as a normal practice, I would say you should have, you know, it depends on your debt. How much debt do you have? If you got $10 million worth of debt, I just want to have at least 10% of a million dollars sitting in cash. All right. 10%, 10%. What about um, when now when the interest rates are going up and up and up, uh, 
Well, what, now's what, the time to say, you know, I was always a firm believer of borrow, borrow, borrow. But now the interest rates are so high, it doesn't make sense. So now I'm saying, well, shit, I'm not paying all this goddamn money to the bank. I'm going to take some of the cash I got, and I'm going to buy down some of my debt until the rate comes down. Because I can't, can't see giving that money out to the bank every month. You know, if I got the money, I'll just invest in myself. The money I got invested in other places, I'm now going to invest in me. And, uh, you know, I have more money tied up in the property, but, hey, I'm in real estate. So who can I trust better than me? Hmm. And how was you know, two? It's a different situation, you know. How was two thousand nine for you when the two thousand nine? Yeah, I mean, I had a big portfolio and I sold it all in two thousand and ten. Luckily, you know, and then I was there when all the deals were popping, so I, you know, I had money to spend. I think we're going to hopefully see that happen again. We're going to see a a big opportunity coming this way, you know, with a lot of opportunity in buying stuff, you know, because interest rates are up. I'm already starting to see the cap rates go up. A Starbucks used to be a four and a half cap. I saw one today for five and a half cap, you know, but it still don't make sense because you got to borrow money at six to seven percent. So I'm starting to see movement in the market. You know, it just takes people time to realize this shit ain't worked what it used to be because they got to pay more to the bank now. You know, I'm realizing it. I got stuff for sale right now. I'm getting, I'm going to sell my properties for a lot less than I thought I would because the guy that's buying them is only have so much to pay, you know, the bank. I pay the bank every day, every month. Right. Right. All right, Mr. Spaniard from Estonia. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for calling. And you can go to bed now. It's one o'clock. Go to bed. It's hot as hell in here. Yeah, it's a little hot. All right. Uh, shout out. Door, Let's see. Get the air in. Turn the air out. on. Shout out, Stevenson Durandis. Thank you for the super chat. Are there any special bank loans that can be used to buy, fix, and flip a property? I see 203k loans that require the owner to live in. What are your thoughts on live-in flips to get the 203K loans? Well, you know, honestly, how do you live in a place that you need to fix up? That's a good question. So. True. And when it's done, oh, I intended to live here, but, you know, something came up. I don't whatever. I don't know. You know, basically, you can't get a loan on almost anything if you're prepared to put 20% down. Maybe now banks are getting a little nervous. It might take you 25 but it needs work. But, you know, banks will loan you money if it makes sense. And if you are trustworthy, you know, banks just have their requirements. I can go out tomorrow and I can borrow money on a totally piece of crap, dead thing. Well, I, because I'm not a risk. They say, sure, you want the money here, take the money. They want to loan money to people that have money. If you ain't got a lot of money, it better be a damn good deal and you can prove it to them. And then you got to have some skin in the game, you know. So that's all you can do, you know. Or do the 203 and just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Get it fixed and then tell them, hey, I'm sorry. I couldn't move in. All right. Shout out uh, Grafman. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Ben, I'm 17 looking to get my real estate license this summer. What is the best thing to start with in the real estate business? I mean, you know, it depends. I mean, typically when people get a real estate license, they learn the ropes by going to an office full of other real estate agents and getting in with that group. You know, and there you go. So, I mean, if I was you, I'd get a nice suit after you get a license. When you're 18, get your license. You know, put a nice suit on. Find an office that's making money. Don't waste your time around people that ain't making money. Because, you know, how the hell are they going to help you if they ain't helping themselves? So, if you're 18 years old, dress yourself up real nice. Find the office that's selling the most expensive houses. Try to grab on in a coattail of another broker to learn the ropes, do the showings, do the open houses, take the phone calls, and learn the game. And, you know, you can just be sitting in a real estate office and people will walk in all the time and say, hey, I'm looking for a house. Oh, great. Then you sit down with them, you go find out what they need, what they can afford. You look it up on a computer, you find them a house, you drive them around, you buy them a little lunch, and they buy a house and you make a commission. I mean, that's what you do, you know? Or you could also take the license and try to go into property management. But that's more a salary type position. With selling real estate, it's commission. The sky's the limit. You sell a million dollar house, you're going to make about 30 grand if you split it with another agent. What else? All right. Uh, shout out Jonathan Pitty. Thank you for the super chat. Ben, I've been following you for years. Took a 27 unit deal over the last year from 2.3 million to an appraised value of $4 million by Congratulations. Raising, Very by, good. By raising rents and cleaning up the place. <clears throat> I have to plan on my next move. 
I'll be scheduling a consult. Go to BenMal.com, consult with Ben. I mean, you know, that's great. You see, real estate is not brain science. And, you know, most anybody can do it if you're serious about it. You know, you buy it, you fix it, you make the rents higher, you lower the expenses, you cleaned it up. Now it's worth more money. There you go. I've been doing it for, th- I don't know, a long time, 37 years. What else, Aaron? Anything else? Yeah, we got a caller. We have a caller. We have a caller. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Very good. Um, so thanks to your videos, I um, I bought my first rental about a year and a half ago. It's um, it's a townhome. I paid 192 for it. I put about 10000 into it with new floors, painting, and making it look nice. Now it's worth about three hundred. What that's what they're selling, and in, in this in this community, and um, I'm cash flowing in about a thousand a month. All right. So your choices is take a hundred grand and run, or take keep getting uh, twelve thousand a year. That's, that's a thousand a month after the association dues, is, taxes, everything in your pocket. Yes, a thousand in my pocket. All right. Well, a thousand. You know, it depends. Would you rather have the hundred grand? Then you might be open to some taxes. Did you live in it? You didn't live in it. You rented no, it. No, I didn't right. live in it. No, you rented it. So, I mean, you know, it's up to you. What do you want to do? How much money you got in the bank? You know, if you got nothing in the bank, it might be a good opportunity to put a big check, chunk of change in your bank. But can you afford to give up the thousand bucks a month until you figure out what to do with that extra hundred grand? You know, but how yeah. much did you put? How much money do you have in the in the place of your own? Um, I put fifty down. As, as a down payment that I had about is it 50 yeah 50 all right so if you sold it you walk away with almost 150 yeah i have about 150 um in it as equity well what could uh, you do with 150 that's the question of the day yeah can you, can you get into something else that's going to appreciate and grow yeah that that's a question i would love to be in the in the commercial game because i'm renting my commercial for my business i'm com- i'm renting something commercial my wife is renting something commercial and it's it's just a pain in the butt it's very expensive we're responsible for everything how much is your rent every month for your business um 2400 how many square feet uh 2400 2400 and your wife is paying how much um 1200 <laughs> for 100 square feet 30s, yeah, but are they specified locations? I mean, I don't know what kind of business you're in. You know, could you go out and buy something where the money you're paying in rent would turn you into an owner? Can you find the right location for your business? Can you find a place for the right price? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of empty spaces out there. I mean, you know, I don't know what kind of, what kind of you want to tell us what kind of business you're in? Is it legal? <laughs> yeah, it's legal. I'm, I'm a car dealer. A I'm car dealer. Well, warehouse you need space. Office. well, you need you need space for park cars, right? Yeah. Well, then you got to find another a car dealer that's retiring and going out of business, and see if you can get buy it and uh, buy the real estate from them. I don't. I mean, I see them out there, but or find a place where it's zoned for you to open up that kind of space. But your wife can't work in the same place as you're working, right? No, no, unfortunately, no. She's in the she's in, she's an esthetician, so she's, she's a oh, esthetician. Too. What is that? You put people to sleep. No, she's an esthetician. She she does cosmetics. She does lashes oh. and all beauty things. Oh, you can buy cars and get makeup done at the same <laughs> damn time. It's great. You get all the women customers. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I mean, it's always nice to at least look and see and see also if a uh, if you can borrow the money, you know, to uh, to put down on on a business. Yeah, I, I, was, know, I was looking. Maybe, I was looking. maybe you can go. Um, what's the business loans called? Um, you know, people have bought property from me utilizing the um, – my brain ain't working. I had a tough week. But there's a uh, – you know, when the government uh, backs you up, you know, a business-type loan. SBA, SBA, Small Business okay. Association. Yeah, yeah. You can look into that if you found the right location where you tell them, hey, I'm going to have a business here. And then they might give you a good loan. But, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? I mean, right now, how much money you got in the bank? You don't want to tell us. About 20000 My 20, personal thousand. You're not gonna be able to do much twenty thousand. You ain't selling enough cars. You gotta sell more cars. Yeah, you go I do. to the auction and buying cars or what? You go to the auction and buy them. I go to auction private owners. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you. You know, a lot of people may not know out there, but I buy cars with rebuilt titles. You know why? Because it's cheaper. Because I don't plan on selling them. So <laughs> what? The car was in an accident. You buy it, and and then they fixed it properly. I inspect it. I made sure it was fixed properly. I don't care. I'm not selling. I'm not gonna. I'm using a car to use, and the engine and training's good. I got a bunch. I bought about six cars for all the employees and all the shit we do. I buy a rebuild title in a minute. 
And then you can, you know, you can sell them for a little less than other people, you know, that worked. And uh, I don't know. That's what I would do. But anyway, I got a Rolls Royce for sale right now. I just dropped the price to four ninety nine. Okay, what's five twenty five? Yeah, that's it's I, in the range. I, I, I I'll tell you what, right now you can buy it from me, but you ain't got it. You know, you have to give me at least four fifty. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Well, good luck to you, and uh, sell you. more cars. I will. Thank you. you hey, Rafal needs a car. He wants to buy a Tesla. Can you help him? He can't. I got, buy I got one. Tesla. I got one. Let me know. How much for the used Tesla? Is the Model Y? No, it's it's the three. The three for a file. Stick with a three. What do you care? How much? <laughs> Thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand. The brand new one's only forty now. Yeah, a little more. They give you a seventy-five hundred off and all this stuff. What was the big recall that happened with him? I heard on the news today. Oh no, yeah, self-driving. But a lot of people ain't got this self-driving stuff. They say no. the self-driving's causing a lot of accidents. So it's not really self-driving because they're telling you you got to assist the self-driving. So it's not self-driving; it's assisted driving. Anyway, I was watching the news on that. But good luck to you. Thank Sell you. some more cars. And I don't know if you can put that money to use, and it's going to help you in life. Sell a condo, but you got to make sure that it makes sense when you give up that twelve hundred bucks a month or a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, take care. All right, what else we got? All right, shout out LCO. Thank you for the super chat. Real estate impacts on urban development. Real estate impacts on urban development. Stay tuned in for news at 11. What are you talking about? How real estate impacts yeah, on urban like development? Much, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, urban development. It's a city area. It's a busy area. I mean, you know, if you can afford to do real estate in an urban area, it's great. If it's a tough urban area, you know, it can make you a lot of money. But, you know, you can make money anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's all about the deal. You got to find the deal. That's it. So it's all about, you'll find the money as the next step, finding a deal that makes sense that's going to make you money. That's what I do. I look at hundreds and hundreds of emails a day, and I'm looking for the one that can make me some money. There you go. All right. Uh, shout out Joe V. Thank you for the super chat. V. Aaron, for day trading, do you trade bonds and do you trade from the news or do you follow a certain pattern each day? I mean, the only bonds that we really do are what tax free municipal bonds, but those are OTC, meaning like over the counter. So they're not really, it's not like a stock, it's different. But I mean, bonds, we usually just buy to what? Stick bonds money like in there and collect account. the yield. I mean, you just stick put it in, in there, there, you forget about it's it. A, it's going to be worth what you pay when it's over. Yeah. And you get your tax free income. And it, it's, it's basically a safe place to put your money. Now, for but stocks, they have corporate bonds too. That as well. But um, there are also some that are traded. But um, for stocks, this is what I do for me. Sixty percent of my trade pretty much depends on the chart. That's that's it. That's literally my secret. And then forty percent is the news. Now the only reason why I weigh the chart than the news is because it happens. The news will say one thing, and the stock goes a completely different uh, way. So sixty percent the chart, forty percent the news. That's what I stick by, and it's worked pretty well so far. So that's really it. And then uh, shout out James O'Hara. Thank you for the super chat. I just sold shares of my business for $1 million. In, Ooh, shares of his business. In the UK. and He's sharing. And want to get into my first property deal. Where do you think I should begin? You want to get your first property deal in the UK? In the UK. I don't know. I went to the UK. It was very expensive. And, you know, I don't know how people make money in real estate in all these other countries. But, I mean, you know, it's all about finding something that makes sense. You know, take that million bucks, number one, put it in a bank right now, get some interest on it, and find something that you know that you will be successful with. You know, I mean... I, I mean, I have no clue what to do in the UK. I mean, I guess people have the same lives there. People have places to sleep. People have places to work. People have places for business. People have places for everything, everywhere in the world. You got to find the right deal. It's going to have some upside, but you have to get out there and look, you know, and now's a good time to look because prices are coming down. People are going to get desperate. Every day I read articles about the big shots. It starts with them that defaulted on hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in loans right now. Crazy money. So it's going to start happening, but find the deal. All right. Uh, shout out Arturo. Thank you for the super chat. What's your view on landscape lighting as a value add? I heard that well-installed landscape lighting <clears throat> can increase property value by up to 30%. You know, <clears throat> landscaping <clears throat> to me is more important than the lighting. 
Okay, the lighting shows it at night, and you know, anything you can make an improvement to a property and make it look nicer, make it more desirable, is going to be an improvement for the property. It's that every property has its own need. If it's going to make that big of a difference to put landscape lighting in there, hell yeah, you put some landscape lighting in there. It's low voltage, and um, you know, and you go for it. But improvements are always great to you know make in your property, especially you know if that's a value add. You know, but I'm big on landscaping. You know, I rock it, baby. Yeah. I rock it and plan it all day long. And then we do lighting, you know, and, you know, lighting's great, especially in commercial properties. You need for safety. I mean, yeah. Correct but, me if I'm wrong, but curb appeal <clears throat> is one of the most important yeah, things when presenting a property. Because that's the first thing a buyer comes to look at it, a broker, anybody comes to look at it, is tenant, the curb appeal. The tenant, everybody. anybody. Praiser. So curb appeal is very, very important in real estate. All right. What else? All right. Um, shout out JJ Gubb. Thank you for the super chat. Did you use grants to offset the cost of your EV chargers or did you pay for these outright? I am looking into getting into the EV charger install business and exploring all avenues. All right. Well, number one, I know it, it differs. It depends on the location. In some locations, I think little Ben actually spent the money and he's going to get an income from them. And in other locations, we let Tesla come in and they spend a shitload of money on our shopping centers but I don't think we get much return, if any, on them. I think we it depends where you should contact Tesla and see what kind of deal they'll make you. Um, there are companies out there that'll do it. I mean, you can try doing it yourself. But, you know, it's definitely the way of the future, and it attracts more people to our property, so it's good for our tenants, which is good for us. So we're trying to do it everywhere we can. We're doing all the grocery shopping centers. We got it. We think we did it John's Pass mm -hmm. inside the garage. And uh, they're great, you know. I mean, it's people need them. You got to have them. And if you can make money on them, even better. Do it. All right. Uh, shout out Stephen Shapiro. <clears throat> Thank you for the super chat. Hi Ben. I have six family, uh, six, six single family homes, five rentals, and one primary in Arizona, ranging from five hundred k to one point two million dollars each. Uh, it's twenty five percent down on each. This year, I'm thinking of Midwest turnkey Section Eight houses for easy cash flow. Ooh, what are your thoughts? Easy cash flow, yeah. I mean, listen, like I keep saying, you know, if you got six family house, six single family homes, and they're worth that kind of money, I mean, you're in pretty deep. Okay, I hope you're getting a good cash flow to carry that kind of debt with 25% down, you know. And if you are, I'm very happy that you are. So, I mean, if you want to buy more, it's the same thing. It's all about the cash flow. If it's going to be easy cash flow, that's great. But, you know, the hard cash flow is the ones that make you the big money down the road. But, you know, go wherever you want to go and look for a deal. And see if the numbers work. Simple as that. You've already done it with six houses already. You might want to start looking at some rental units, you know, because, you know, all the shit in one place, you know, sometimes you go to the right place and there ain't much difference in the rent from a house to the, a three bedroom house and a three bedroom apartment, you know. So you might want to start looking at some small rental properties, duplex, triplex, fourplex, things like that. Then you walk into income, all right? So go for it, find a deal. Find the deal, and you'll have a meal. All right. Uh, shout out Paul Wright. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, ben, I own a few rental properties. All are paid off. Should I loan on them right now to bankroll new deals, or should I wait until it hits the fan and rates drop? I feel if I wait <clears throat> when times are right, but it may be too late. Well, you know, that's why you got to line yourself up. All right? Before you, <clears throat> you know, you never know when it's time to pull the trigger. But you got to be ready to pull a trigger. You got to have it ready to go. Bullets ready, ready to go. Boom, 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 and pay that damn deal. Buy that deal. Now's the time to sit and look for deals. Wait for the shit to hit the fan some more. But line yourself up. You know, preferably if you get a line of credit, it's best because you don't use the money. You don't pay for the money. You know, if you start taking money out and you ain't got nowhere to put it. That could be ugly because if you stick it in the bank, you're only going to get about 4.5% right now, and you're probably going to be paying 6 or 7 So you're still going to have to pay that spread. But, you know, find the deal. But line yourself up to have access to the money, okay? <clears throat> so you have somewhere to run to and get it. And if you can't get the line of credit, you got to do the refi. Can you swallow the extra? Probably it's going to be about a 2, and a half, two or 2.5 two point spread, and you're going to pay out of your pocket until you deploy that money. That's the decision you got to make. 
you know, and uh, you got to do whatever you can do to get ahead, but it's all finding a deal. It's going to make you more equity, more cash flow, something that's going to help you grow in life. Mm. Well, we have a caller. Yes, sir. Hey, Ben, how are you doing? Hanging in um, there. Hanging in there. How are you? Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, so I'm 24 years old, and I only share that kind of like for perspective. So I'm on my first project. Um, it was initially supposed to be a flip, but it turned into a new construction. So we're going to be on the market by like April, I think. And so I know like from watching your show and stuff about 1031 exchange for my money. Um, so my question is, if you were in my shoes, um, my 50% partner has a ton of skills. I think they can do almost anything. Um, we built this from the ground up all by us. The only thing we subcontracted was plumbing. So we can do just about anything. If you were in my shoes, what type of deals would you be going after? Uh, like multifamily, rehabs, new no construction. Offense, but why would you tell me you're going into a flip that turned into a new construction? Okay. When you, explain, did, your homework, when you did your homework, <clears throat> it should have determined that the place needed to be new construction and not a flip. So what happened? Tell us right, well, Tell us the truth. Let me explain. So, so it's in, you know, in Detroit, there's a lot of really cheap houses in, yep. in the area. Yep. So it was in a suburb. So we picked it up for 10 K and it was a 13,000 square foot lot. And so, you know, it was like only a 700 square foot house. So we could rehab it and make 30 grand or we could tear it down and try to make a hundred basically. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And once be done in April. Now the yeah. thing is, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, 1031 is good, but you know, also consider, you know, how much you're going to make on the house. Uh, you're going to make what about so how much you paying to fix well, to build it? I, I, I'm a 50 percent partner. Um, how much do you guys pay to build it all together? Uh, 190. You paid 190 to build it. Yeah. All right, you didn't pay much for it. So you into it for a couple of hundred grand by the time it's done, right? Yeah. All right. What's it worth when you're done? We're hoping 285 ish. You know. All right, so two eighty five. You're probably gonna have some commissions and closing costs and all that bullshit. Well, I'm I'm currently getting licensed. Grand. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm getting licensed to try to save that percentage. That's fine, but typically a buyer is going to have their own agent. You're going to pay them a few bucks. Okay. You might get half the commission. Okay. And wait a minute. You're not going to have no license in one month. April's only a month. I'm, and a half oh, I'm halfway through the class. <laughs> I have like 15 hours left. The class of the course that you need before you take the test, right? Yes, yes. Then you got to study for the test, and the yeah. test needs got shit to do with the class. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know people are going through it right now. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, the point is this get your license, that's great. Yeah. You can have about $75,000 profit. Um, you know, split, and tax yeah. on there is going to be 15 grand. You know, yeah. you, hey, you make sure you don't sell it till the year is up. You had it a year, right? You had it more than a year. You're building it, right? Uh, we bought it in January of 22, so yeah. Oh yeah, as long as it's over a year, it's long-term capital gains. Worst case scenario, you had to pay fifteen grand. You might have some losses somewhere else in your life. Okay. Or your partner may have some losses. You don't have to pay all that tax. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can try to ten thirty one. That's fine. But um, no. I mean, that's great. So uh, is I hope you have to finish and make that money. Is a ten thirty one? I I don't know how I'm probably running out of time. Is that only for mostly things that you want to park your money in long term? No, ten thirty one is only so you don't have to pay the capital gains on the money you made. Got you. If you make seventy five grand, all right. After you pay, uh, or after you figure out how much you're into it, whatever you're into it is your basis. Okay, okay? it's really a base. I don't know why I call it basis. It's a base. Yeah. You know, what if it is? You fix it up for that. You're into this thing for two hundred grand, and now you're going to make seventy five grand. The government's going to want fifteen thousand bucks long term capital gains from you. What state do you live in? Hopefully, you don't live in a taxable state. Michigan. Oh, Detroit. Yeah. I don't know. Michigan may have stack state. I don't know. They may they may hit you for five six yeah. percent. I don't know. So the ten thirty one is only a way to defer the tax. Then what you do is you don't touch the money. You take that money and you got to put it all into the next deal. I understand. That's the way you got to do it, and just do it, not pay the tax right now. I got you. You die, and when you're dead, they can't collect. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you. Congratulations. Get that license. All right, uh, shout a out. License is like uh, it's a license to make money. Yeah. Okay, you can make money with that license. You know, and it don't take four years of college. Don't take two years of college. It takes one course and one test. That's all it takes. Yep. Exactly. All right, shout out Uno Momento. Thank you for the super chat. Hey Ben, I want to pull out an FHA 
uh, loan on a multifamily property, but I'm not finding anything near me on the market. I live in Arizona, by the way. Where do you think is the best state to invest in multifamily right now? I mean, if you look up a multi apartments like a fourplex, because FHA is only going to go up to a fourplex. All right. So if you're going for that, you're going to have to spread out a little further because you can't have it too far away. You know, you're going to have to expand your radius. You know, draw a circle on the map and say, okay, I can travel within this 40 or 50 miles. And then expand your radius, start looking out more until you find a deal. You know, you're not going to buy one in another state. I don't know. That's going to be kind of hard to run. All right? So, and if it's FHA, they expect you to live there for the first year at least. So, you know, you better think about expanding your radius. All right? Flagstaff, Arizona. All right, shout out Gav. Thank Mesa, you. Arizona. Thank you for your super chat. Hi, I have a Tucson, Arizona. I have a big regret. Uh oh. I didn't buy Bitcoin on December 30th for 16 grand. And now it's worth 24 grand. And tomorrow could be back to 16. So what do you want for my life? What do you think about Bitcoin? Would I you mean, invest? listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say, okay, over the history of we've seen what people are acting like nuts, and 16 is a bargain. If you're into buying Bitcoin, then yeah, 16 was probably a bargain. You know, 17 to me was a bargain. But, uh, you know, I mean, everything's up and down. The point is, you could be up today and you could be down a month from now. It, it's a roller coaster ride, baby. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't do Bitcoin, you know, and I don't even do the right stock. So I'm really, you know, I'm not doing shit. I'm doing real estate now. But, uh, I mean, that's the way investing is because you're not in control. In real estate, you're in control, baby. You're the one running the show. You control your profits. You start investing in bitcoins and stocks and all that. You're just gambling, basically. There's no difference between buying stocks and buying bitcoin and all that. It's just gambling. You're placing a bet, and hopefully it's going to win. Exactly. Place your bets. Place your bets. All right. Shout out Best Clips. Thank you for the super chat. How hard are evictions in Florida when buying foreclosures? I know Vincent does mm. them. I mean, uh, Florida is a landlord-friendly state, okay, because the, the law is pretty much here to say, listen, either you pay the rent or you don't, or do you have rights to the place or you don't? If you ain't got rights or you ain't paid for the place, then you got no right to live there. This ain't California. Okay. So basically evictions are pretty easy here. We don't take them. We don't blow them all out of proportion with all this crap they do. And they drag me to the mud in California, uh, in New York. They don't do it. You know, it's here. It's real simple. Either you pay or, or no stay. And if it's a foreclosure and you lost the house, then you lost the right to live there. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's better to make deals with people. You buy, your, hey, listen, I'm sorry, you lost your house, but you got to go. I tied my money up in this. It's an investment in me. All right, what do you need to go? You need 500 bucks? You need a moving truck? What do you need? Come on. All right, you help them out. That's the simplest way of doing it. Otherwise, you serve with a notice that they have to leave, and uh, you process it through the court, and eventually the sheriff will come out if they don't want to leave. And uh, there you go. If they were foreclosed on, they got no uh, no case. They can't fight you in court. They got foreclosed on. They got nothing. You know, I mean, that's all there is to it. All right. Um, let's see. Shout out BVS. Thank you for the super chat. What are the all important terms and phrases you need to know in real estate? The most important, the top five. Why don't you go take real estate one-on-one, find out. All the terms and phrases, go to Ben's uh, DD list online. Due diligence. I mean, you know, people that don't know that. Terms. There's all kinds of terms. There's terms in real estate. There's terms in buying. There's terms in selling. There's terms in financing. I mean, you know, terms and phrases, you know. Take a course if you have to, or basic real estate principles one-on-one or something. But, you know, basically it's just contracts. Read and understand the contracts. And then in every contract... The first part of the contract, you know what it is? Definitions. When they have terms in a contract, they typically have definitions that spell out what the terms and phrases are. And understand the terms. Terms are just, you know, terms, what it means, what's going on, how long it is, how long that. Read it, understand it, and if you can't, get a lawyer, and he'll explain it to you, or a good real estate agent. Exactly. The only way you learn is by doing it. You got to dig in and just do it and make sure you surround yourself with people that can back you up. I got backed up by, oh, I need brokers, I need lawyers, I need everybody. And it's hot as hell in here. <laughs> is the AC not working or what? <laughs> what kind of cheap ass studio you got here in this mansion? 
Now the Pollock left. What do you got, Aaron? All right, shout out Gerard. Thank you for the super chat. Did you eat yet? No. I'm waiting. She made chicken and rice. Chicken and rice. What else we got? All right, shout out Javil. Thank you again for the super chat. Uh, ben, I want to start in commercial real estate around 450K, but I can only do hard money in bank statement loan. Where should I start to scale and do 1031 exchange? Listen, if you can only do a hard money loan or bank statement loan, you need to find a mortgage broker, okay? Because he knows who wants to loan that money. All right. He knows. He knows when you when you're borrowing money, you know, you fit into these categories, A, B, C, D. All right. And if you have to go hard money, you're probably around a D or maybe a C. Well, find a broker because he'll maybe have a pool of people that he could run to. He'll match you up with the right lender. He'll make a marriage. You know, so look look and see about getting a mortgage broker that can help you. You lay your cards on the table. This is who I am. This is what I got. This is what I want to do. What can you do to help me? That's what you do. And as far as 1031 exchange, you know what? You got to start by, you know, doing one. You got to sell something to do a 1031 exchange. You have something that sells and then plan on buying something. Simple. It's logic. Common sense. And if it makes sense, it makes money. We'll do yep. a t-shirt to say that. If it makes sense, it makes money. Yeah, coming soon. And then we're going to do it in other countries with all their denominations. <laughs> if, if we'll do it in like uh, different languages. That'd be cool. You know, if it makes sense, it makes rubles. What do they got in Poland? Zwarte. What? We got Zwarte. Zwarte. If it makes sense, it makes Zwarte. <laughs> Which means gold. It means gold. Gold is what you call your dollars? Ah, Polish. All right. What else? All right. All right. Shout out, Anthony. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, ben, I am a young tax professional who works with clients like yourself looking for advice. You're too young. What do you look for in a CPA, JD, et cetera? Show me the money, baby. Show me the money, baby. I mean, you know, I just hired a new CPA because my other one got too old. He retired. Um, basically, you know, if you're a young tax professional, you should be looking to be in a CPA, I would think. So, you know, what I look for in a CPA is I want a guy that knows his shit. I want to make sure he's on top of all the IRS rules. You know what happened? I'm going to tell you a true story, okay? And I was very kind of a little uh, upset about it. Here in Florida, we had some hurricanes. So what did the IRS do? The IRS actually can be your friend sometimes. The IRS said, you know what? All these southern states and all this list of states had a hurricane. We know it's very difficult to meet the time frames of the 1031, so we're going to give you an extension. They gave us an extension for the first hurricane. I said, thank you. And then I thought my time was going to be up. The IRS put another notice out saying they're going to give an extension for another hurricane. I didn't even know we had another hurricane, but we did. So I, I didn't know, and I rushed into a deal not knowing I had more time. So I was kind of upset with my accountant that, you know, you should have known this stuff. You know, I'm into 1031s. You should know everything that's going on with 1031s. You should have some kind of notification from IRS. But a good CPA is somebody that can, can uh, that has experience doing what you need done with other people. Okay. You don't want to go to a CPA that specializes in, you know, doctors and then you're really just in real estate. I mean, you know, you want a CPA that knows this stuff. And uh, can really, you know, know all the tax advantages and all the things that, you know, you can take advantage of. All right. Uh, shout out, Alexander. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Two million cash for <sighs> bad credit. What do I do? Can't get approved for anything. No credit repair can help. Just been using hard money loan. Well, you know, two million bucks. It's hard to believe you can't make deals and get that credit cleaned up. I mean, you know, you, sometimes you got to pay, baby. You know, we got to spend some money to get on the right track. You know, uh, you can't carve out a hundred, couple of hundred grand or you owe that much. I mean, I don't know. But, you know, good credit is very important if you want to borrow money. Let's face it. You know, otherwise it says you're doing what? No credit pair can help. Well, he's using hard money. Well, if you got to use hard money, you got to hurry up and keep using hard money till you make enough money to maybe get your credit straight. Or you're just going to be at a disadvantage using hard money all the time until you get your own money. The problem is, uh, what did you do and how much did it pay off that you can't borrow with good credit anymore? Did it pay off? Was it worth the bad credit? Maybe something happened outside your, uh, you know, abilities and you couldn't help it. I don't know. But 
You know, do what you got to do. You find the right deal. It doesn't matter what kind of money you use. As long as the numbers work, it makes sense. My first deals were hard money. Okay. If I had to pay 10% when I was in my 20s, I did it. I had to, you know, and then I got better and better and we got my credit up. What else? We got a caller. We got a caller. We have a caller. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy's not here. He's on the road. Yes. How you doing, man? Thank you. How are you? Yeah, you? first of all, I'm doing very good. I had a couple of private calls. You hold on, hold on. Your more. microphone sounds really we bad. We need to fix your mic. We fix can't hear you. Mic. Hold on. Fix your mic and then uh, we'll reconnect you. Jimmy, 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 where are you? Where are you? All right, what else? Let's do one more super chat. All right, one more super <laughs> chat. Don't forget that guy. You know, he called in. He called in, you know. Yeah, but you know, his mic is like bad. to forget people. <laughs> can't hear him. So All right, we'll do, we'll do one more super chat. All right, uh, shout out Benjamin. Thank you for the super chat. Is life focused on only money? Vague and plain. Is life focused only on money? Vague and plain? Listen, the money is to make your life not vague and plain. So I don't know what you talk about. We're going to go out this weekend, even though I can't afford it. We're going to look at boats. We're not buy one, but we're going to look at them. I mean, you know, the money makes your life easier. I mean, let's face it. And then you got to do something all every day. You also do something to make money and make your life happy and make hopefully the people around you happy. It's what you do with the money, you know? Happy wife, happy life. Yep. Oh, wait, where, where are we going this weekend? The Miami Boat Show, right? Yeah, Miami Boat Show this weekend. Come on down. Everybody see us at the out. Boat Show. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday looking for a hot deal. So if you guys want to see us, we'll be there Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday, Sunday at the Miami Boat Show. Where Do you know where it's at? It's in Miami. Look it up. Yeah, look it up. You're going to drive us there. I know. Anyway, so basically, you know, all I can tell you is, you know, you want nice things in life, it costs money. I'm sorry. That's the way the world works. So if you want nice shit in life, you want, you know, a better for your family, you're going to make money, and then life should be good. Enjoy your money. It should make you happy. If money don't make you happy, then you got to go see a psychiatrist. What else? We're going to try the caller back in. Hey, Jimmy, are you there? Jimmy, are you there? Jimmy! Yeah, Jimmy! Ben, you. Kind well, of. But go ahead. We'll give it a try. Talk loud. Scream. No. All right, uh, lower. I, I asked called, the screen and you go lower. Yeah, I called my bank today. I said I want to transfer the uh, deed. You know, I want to transfer the uh, house into an LLC, but the bank the bank told me I can't do it. So what do you recommend? Because everybody says make each house in its own LLC, but he told me not to do it. Typically, you do it when you buy it. I mean, the problem, the thing is this: is it going to be a single member LLC with just you on it? No, it's me. The mortgage is in me and my wife, so it'd be the two of us. Well, if she's on the hook for the loan and she's going to be in the LLC, then I don't see why the bank would have a problem with it. But you personally signed for the loan, right? Yeah, me and my wife signed, yes. Well, you know, I, you know, it's about relationships. I don't know why they would give you a hard time. It's really LLC gives you asset protection. All right. In the bank, they don't need the LLC is not going to stop them from coming after you if you don't pay them. So they got nothing to lose. Every property I own, every property I finance is in a single member, separate LLC or with me and maybe my son or, or something like that. You know, but the point is, I don't know why they wouldn't. Maybe they're not used to doing a lot of loans like that. Maybe, maybe, I don't know what kind of is it a big bank. No, it's a small bank. They got like four locations in my area. He, he told me now at closings, he said I could do it now. If I get another house at the closing, I could put you it in. You always do them when you buy them. You don't really convert them over, but you can. But be careful. Yeah. I'm not sure. You may have to pay to do the transfer to the county. It might be what they call here in Florida. I think it requires you paying dock stamps. So, you know, you may have to have some cost involved, too, by doing that. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you probably want to maybe spend a few bucks. And, I mean, you can, you can threaten the bank and say, listen, if you don't let me convert it to an LLC, which I'm personally on the hook for, and it's only me and my wife that are going to be in the LLC, and we're not going to add nobody else in, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna either let me convert it or I might think about paying a loan off. I don't know. They may not want to lose the loan. But then again, you right. probably get a really good rate, don't you? Yeah, I got a good rate. I got like 4%. And then it's going to cost me about $3,000 between paying the state and then paying the lawyer to make the LLC. But would you spend well, the three grand? Is it worth the it? the lawyer, call the bank and say, what's the problem here? Why can't my 
and why can't my client convert this to an LLC? It's going to be only him and his wife membership. They, you know, it's, it's only for your asset protection. The only reason why you do an LLC is so if somebody comes after you on another property, they can't touch that property. You know, uh, unless you really think you're going to be sued. Now it's a house. Yeah, it's a it's a two family right. house. I don't live there. You got insurance. Investment. You got insurance on it, right? Yeah, I got insurance. I have you a liability. You got liability yeah. insurance. If you got liability insurance, then you're covered. Typically, insurance is going to cover any problem that you have with that house. But if you're underinsured and government something happens in another property, they could come after you personally and catch that house. An LLC protects that asset to be a standalone business. And you should have a lawyer just ask the bank, what's the problem here? Okay, they may I got another to, question. You know, I don't know. The bank, the bank may have a, a rule that you signed saying you can't change the type of ownership. I don't know what your loan doc said, uh, but have a, it ain't going to hurt for a lawyer to ask them. Okay, not I got one more question. Good. All right, there's a, all right. I'm from Greece, but I live in the United States. I could go every two years if I want. There's a, there's a property I could buy. It's an apartment for $25,000. And I can make, let's say, eight percent return on it, and and then it's already been rented for five years. The tenant lives there for five years now. In Greece? Yeah, in Greece, twenty-five thousand. Yeah. All right, eight percent on twenty-five thousand. And, and there's a tenant. What's it going to make you? Yeah, like you know, ten percent like is two thousand a year. Maybe. It's twenty-five hundred, so two thousand a year. You're going to make one hundred and fifty bucks a month. You're going to be getting involved with having property in another country. I don't know what the taxes are in Greece. I don't know. I mean, you know, if you're from Greece and you feel comfortable with it, then do it. But it's not big money. What, 150 bucks a month? You're going to take on a responsibility yeah. to buy a place to live and you're only going to make 100 bucks a month? I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. It's not worth it. Okay. Um, all right. Good all luck right. to you. Appreciate the call. All right. All right. Uh, shout out, Alex. Thank you for the super chat. What does a deal look like to you? Can you break down these numbers right here? So you buy it for four hundred and thirty grand, and your gross cash flow is forty-four grand, and it's a fourplex. How would you break it down? I mean, if you're buying it for four hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and you're going to get cash flow, now is that net cash flow and your pocket money? All right, forty-three thousand a year would be ten percent. So if you're happy tying up four hundred thirty grand, and you're going to get forty-three ten uh, percent on your money, fine. But if you leverage it. You know, and you only put down 25%, you're only going to put down about 100 grand. You're going to finance 330, then you're going to pay the bank another 20,000 a year. You're going to get for 100 grand, you're going to get about 23,000 a year, which is going to be 20% of your money. So that's why it depends. You got to see. If you put in all cash, you're going to get a low return. To, even when it's, if you're going to get that kind of return right now, uh, on on if you got a ten percent return, it still pays the bar money at six percent, because you're going to make four percent spread on the bank's money. Simple. Do it, or be happy with the ten percent and not owe the bank shit. But you can take a hundred grand, take the other three hundred thirty grand, and put it in something else, mm. and then you know, then you're doing good. You got to spread it out. What else? Are we done? I'm ready to eat. Yeah, we'll we, say we, there. We keep going a little bit. All right. going, people um, pay to take, you know, you got to do it. You can't take people's money. All right, shout out 10 figures deep. Thank you for your chat. I don't believe you remember me. No. In Florida, I was the beach boy who vacated the Chase Lounges. I would be pleased to have you as my mentor. You vacated the Chase Lounges. I would, what the hell are you talking about? All right. Anyway, I don't remember <laughs> any Chase Lounges. And you vacated them. I don't know where you vacated them from. Anyway, the point is this. You don't need a mentor. You need to get a plan. How old is he? 18? 20? What did you say his age? No, I didn't say his age. And he's a beach boy, so he's young. Anyway, get your license. Get a job working in real estate. You know, get your license and sell real estate or go into, you know, a company that's doing real estate where you can start at the bottom, work your way up. I started property management. I learned how to manage stuff for people. Then I learned how to own it myself and manage it. There you go. But, you know, it's just about finding a deal. And the way you're going to find a deal is to learn how to find a deal. And the way you can do that is get around other people doing it. All right. You need brokers. You need to be around other agents. You need to be in that atmosphere. If you surround yourself with successful people, you'll be successful. All right. All right. Uh, shout out, Nathan. Thank you for your super chat. Shout out, Jobby. Thank you again for another super chat. Ben, where in Florida can I start 
uh, fix and flips. Fix and flip, fix and flip. You like right anywhere, depending on finding a deal at a for that you know for only ten thirty one exchange. I mean, you know, listen, finding a deal is finding a deal. Doesn't matter where it's at. Right now, you know, it's a tough time. A lot of home builders are building places. I don't know. They ain't gonna be selling them that easy. You got to go with his growth. All right. You want to go where people are spending money, building shit, you know, where you see things happening. And then you can find some dump and fix it up because things are growing there, then you'll grow. All right? You got to get where the getting's good. So, you know, right now, I don't know, go near the SpaceX program area down in that part of Florida. You can go online and look for stuff down there. Uh, Titusville, uh, all those areas around uh, NASA. NASA. All right, uh, shout out Luis. Thank you for the super chat. Hey Ben, I'm 27 in El Paso, Texas. I have excellent credit, uh, 770 plus. I have 10,000 in student loans. I don't know how to build relationships with banks to get loans to make deals. Where do I start when dealing with banks? Well, you know, hopefully, if you're you got 10 grand in student loans, but hopefully you're working. You know, the first way is typically you're gonna have to buy something if you don't have a lot of money to put down with FHA. Go get to an FHA lender and say, hey, I want to buy some of FHA. You know, how much money do I need down? I would, you know, if you're smart, you're 27, you'll buy something that has some income coming in. Okay. I don't know if you're paying rent right, right now to live somewhere, you know, but FHA is the only way I can know of to start, uh, you know, and it's going to be based on part of your income. But if you find a property like a fourplex that's making money, that helps you qualify. You know, and there you go. You get your foot in the door. You got to start at the bottom, work your way up. But you're going to have to have some sort of cash to work with, you know, something. Even 3500 every 100000 you know, 200000 is seven grand, maybe eight to round it off, maybe mm-hmm. ten. You really should have ten grand. You really want to get serious in real estate to go approach an FHA lender. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, shout out, Charles. Thank you for the super chat. Ben, should I buy, fix, and rent? Or buy, fix, and 1031. Listen, you you buy something and you fix it and it's worth more money. I mean, if you rent it out, then you're doing it for cash flow. I mean, it depends on how much equity you created in the property. If you buy something like I do, you know, I buy a hotel and then I put some money in it. And now the hotel is worth a whole lot more than the money I put into it and the money I paid to buy it. Then I go and I refinance my money and then I keep running it for the cash flow. Same thing with apartments. Same thing with anything. But, you know, if you want to buy it and fix it and sell it, that's fine, too. You just got to have somewhere to go with that money with, you know, once you sell it. You got to have the next deal lined up. But it's always best to try to refinance it, pull your money out, and then some when, when interest rates were lower, and rent it out for cash flow. It depends. What's the cash flow? How much are you going to get a month versus how much money are you going to walk away with if you sell it? You know, which is better for you? All right. Uh, let's see. Shout out Crypt, uh, Crypt Technology. Thank you for the super chat. What's the best way to get into a group deal if you can't afford your first commercial real estate apartment alone? I mean, you know, even the group deals require money, you know, unless you're going to find people with money and you're going to go out there and find the deals and put the whole thing together and run it. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of groups out there you can join, but you're not going to get a big return. You know, you're going to get a decent return maybe if they do what they're supposed to do. And uh, that's it. The best thing to do is to try to, you know, get your hands on money yourself and try to do something small and work your way up, you know. But if you want to start – playing with other people's money. They're out there. You can find them easy. There's people out there willing to put money in a deal, but it's all about finding the deal. You can go to a lender. You can go to a, a mortgage broker like I used to do. And you can say, hey, I found this great deal. He knows what a good deal is. And uh, he's gonna, you can tell him, well, I got this great deal, but I don't have all the money to do it. He'll come in as a partner. If it's a really good deal, you know, find the deal. We got a caller. We have a caller. We have a caller. What's up? What's up? I gotta, you gotta we can't yourself. hear you. Uh-oh. Turn your mic. You I already what? knew it. You confirmed it. Last time you told me I was a beast, I already knew it. You confirmed it. I you did what? Me? No. What did I do? What did you Italian do? Italian Jewish connection hack and sack. House hack. Remember that? House hack. House hack. House hack. Actually, actually, from right after that podcast we had and I mentioned house hack, meet Kevin. 
started a YouTube channel and he started his brand house hack. I think he stole it from your podcast. He stole it from you. You should go to California and you should drag him off his new plane and kick his ass for stealing house hack from you. Kevin, he's not that big. You're a you're a, you look you. like a tough guy. You look like a guy you don't want to get in a fight with. Okay, so so, so listen, I got scared. a I got I got an odd situation and it's in Florida, so it's right up your alley. So basically, subject two. Are you familiar with this creative finance where you're taking over loans? So, I'm so funny. listen. I I went to see our people in Brooklyn yesterday. I saw a guy, and he told me saw a guy in Brooklyn. He he's got seventy five units, right? And basically, it's I'm not going to say exactly where it's in your vicinity. So my vicinity. So so essentially, a let's work, but b. Um, we have How much a, you got to pay for it? How much? We'll get into it, but he's got weak. This is what I want to ask you that's difficult about it. He's saying, and this is, is this common in Florida, that there's doing weekly rentals. Like, he's saying that they're doing weekly rentals. Now, granted, this is a value-add project, so I'm aware that there's going to be issues and stuff like that. But, I mean, is that common in Florida, the whole weekly rental thing? Typically, you know, it depends on how nice the place is. If it's a dump and he's renting by the week, it could be very challenging, okay? And the banks, if you don't have leases and all that, it could be challenging to borrow money against it. I mean, he's running basically an extended stay if he's charging by the week. He's, you know, people aren't committed to long term leases. Uh, you know, there's also issues on how long they're staying there for sales tax. You got to be careful because, you know, typically somebody's got to stay there at least six months, not pay sales tax. If he's right. just collecting the money that way because he's afraid he can't trust them to wait once a month, you know, you got to be careful. You know, it depends. So, if you big money in it, but, you know, you, it depends on the property. It depends on the tenants. It he's a, he's letting me assume the loan. So, basically, if you can catch my drift, I'm basically not going to have to put a lot of money down and essentially take the deed and basically make his payments. But the thing is, A, I'm waiting on the final part of the T12. Details I got so far ha is enough for me to fly down there. So I'm actually coming down there in two weeks. Um, I'll reach out another Go way. Go to .com and send me an email if you want. I, listen, I don't. I, I like to help people. All right, I'm not looking to steal no deals, nobody. Uh, well, listen, you know, but if you, if you give remember me access, last time, I'll look it said, up and I'll say, well, yeah. you know. So remember last time you're like, or maybe Louis I'll write you a check. For eight Louis, you. remember, don't see Louie for eight percent. So I was like, you know what? We got to get smart and we're talking to sellers in a way where it's like we're positioning it so we don't a if they don't put any money down but then we're making it so that they're the bank right they're the mortgage holder but have you, oh, you been got a way bank to pay you got you, you take over this guy's loan no 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 i'm talking about in other loan. situations i oh. and then in that process oh, okay. it made me aware of, of of this so then it's like holy crap like this is something that's like life changing for I've me but this is your Something's vicinity true. you make the payments you run the place he's gone and uh, he's off the hook. But why is he doing that if the place is cash flowing? And why is he walking away? You're so not giving him no money? So I'm not going to throw too much info. But basically, right, well, in a northern Jersey city, he's got a development going. And essentially, you know, and me, I just, I saw this opportunity. All right, well, get a that, hold of me on a private level. All and right, we can talk it. about it. I'm not going to screw you over. I, I believe me. Uh, I'm not looking for weekly I, rentals, Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, that's why I'm thinking convert it to monthly. You double, maybe triple rents at about, I don't know, X amount to the structure. If and the then you're looking at a refi it. that's like $5 million. So we can talk Depends about it. Depends on the property. Can the place be right. fixed up? Can you make those tenants pay you monthly? Is it a normal property? You know, there's a lot of ifs involved. You got to find out all the facts and determine what you could do to make it worth more money. Maybe you're right. right. I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, so that that's what I wanted to explore with you. So basically, good looks. Thank you. And I'm coming after right. me, Kevin. And also, wait, Ben, one last thing. So I run a staffing agency. We hire employees for $5 an hour for virtual uh, for real estate investors. People locally are hiring $25 an hour for an employee. Think about that, what that can do at scale for everyone's business. Go to virtualconnectionhub.com. Ben, we're going to be in uh, conversation real soon. Thanks, brother. Very good virtualconnection.com i'll check it out all right what else we got all right, anything we, else yeah we got some super chats all right, so, Dorita. shout out dylan ben looking at six student houses for 2.3 million rough between six houses there are 28 beds 
current owner has 450 a bed and 650 is the average on other houses per bed. What are your thoughts on student housing and what do I look out for? You know, we done, I had a student housing place that had 580 beds. It was 144 or something, four bedroom, four bath apartments. It's a very good business. If you can raise the rent from 450 a bed to 650 a bed, then yes, you got 200 upside times 28 beds. But I think you're paying a lot of dough. Let's see, six student houses with 28 beds. Those are some big ass houses because 28 beds, they must be sharing rooms. How many freaking beds is that per house? Six times five is 30. So it's about four bedrooms. Six times four is 24. You got about four or five bedrooms in each house. And you're paying a lot of money. Let's see if each house is worth about 400 grand you're paying. Then uh, for 400 grand, you're getting four beds. You rent them out for four times six, 2,400 a month. The numbers don't sound right to me. All right. Uh, you're paying a lot for those houses. Even if you raise the rent to 650, 650 times four beds is about three grand a month, close to it. You're paying 400,000 once you pay your taxes, insurance. I don't know about utilities and well, I don't know. You better go to benmal.com slash shop and let's sit down and do the real numbers on it because it sounds a little rich to me. I bought I bought properties where I was paying I was getting six fifty a bed. I was getting four bedroom units. I only paid a hundred and thirty or four. I paid a hundred thirty forty thousand a unit for four beds paying that. I don't know. We gotta get on the phone. We gotta look at numbers. We gotta look at everything. All right, what else? Uh, shout out Tyler O'Connor. Thank O'Connor. Thank you for the super chat. Hey Ben, can I be your mortgage broker? I'm licensed in Florida and have some good programs. Uh, five million plus. Big well, fan. you know, you can run me, uh, send me an email, shoot me some basic terms. But basically, unfortunately, I don't use brokers anymore because I don't need to. Because I'm not a risk. If I borrow the money, if I borrow money from the bank, I'm doing them a favor. All right. So I don't really need a mortgage broker. You think you're going to give me a better rate than B of A who is sitting on all my money and I owe them a couple of hundred million bucks? I don't think so. They're not going to want me to go somewhere else. So basically, you could try, but I doubt it in this market right now. Where the hell were you when I was supposed to fix my rate at 3%? Tell me that. Then you would have been a golden broker. If somebody would have said, Ben, don't be a stupid ass and fix your goddamn rate a year ago, then that person would be king right now to me. Because they'd be saving me about six million bucks a year. All right, shout out. By Steven. the way, we're selling that new car you got. Can't afford it. Uh, coming soon, by the way. <laughs> but there is new video coming out on that. All right, uh, shout out Steven. Thank you for the super chat. I have four separate properties uh, worth one point seven altogether. I owe one hundred seventy one thousand. Yeah, one hundred seventy one thousand. I owe seventy five thousand. The bank said that they would give me around fifty thousand on a HELOC. He lock, he I want to get the money to buy another property. Help me. Thanks. I mean, you know, basically, if you need the money, do the HELOC. Don't touch the money until you need it because you don't pay for it. All right. So get the HELOCs, get your hands on some cash, that 50 grand, and put it to work to turn it into 100 or more. So get the HELOC. But don't touch that money until you know you got a deal lined up to put it in that's going to make you money. Good luck to you. All right. Uh, shout out Trillion Dollar Dreams. Thank you for your super chat. Got very little cash, 100K, but I have good credit. I live in, what is that, Michigan? I want to buy an apartment complex, 100 doors. Uh, how and where can I get the financing for down payment of 20 to 30%? Are there any institutions I can go to? Yeah, excuse me. All right, here we go. You got a hundred grand in cash, right? Hundred grand in cash is going to get you half a million bucks right now. I mean, you know, you got to get in where you fit in. You know, I started with small little places, and I just kept growing and growing and growing. Take the cash you got, go get approved for a loan, and find the right deal that you can increase the equity in. As simple as that. You can go. I don't know. You can do a lot of. You can talk to a bank. You can talk to a broker. You can go FHA, you know, and maybe get something for less down. But you know, if you ain't got nothing yet, get something. Get a fourplex. Get a fiveplex. Anything. Wherever the deal is at, you know, and just find where the numbers make sense. Where the bank's gonna want to give you a loan, and where you can raise some rents, and you can fix the place up, and you can make more money. And the place worth more money, and then you're worth more money. It's simple, but you know, don't think outside of. You know what your abilities are. If you got a hundred grand to play with, then you're pretty much, you know, at 
a half a million bucks property. And then uh, Trillion Dollar Dreams, he also asked, can I use Subject 2 to acquire commercial property? Listen, you could do Subject 2 anything you want, providing the seller is willing to let you take over his note. And a lot of times, he may not be allowed to, so you kind of walk in a thin line there. You got to be careful. A lot of these finance agreements say, no, you, nobody else can take this thing over. But typically, he's going to be personally on the hook if you screw up. So, you know, any deal could be done if somebody's willing to say, listen, just buy the place, give me a few bucks, take over my mortgage, and it's your problem now. I mean, I've done it plenty and plenty of times. You can do it on any kind of property there is. You know, subject to, subject to the loan. All right. Uh, shout out, Stevenson. Thank you for the super chat. If buying a two-family investment house, do bank underwriters factor annual cap rates in their decision to approve a loan? <clears throat> Listen, if a real estate property has income, all right, then it's part of the real estate and it has a value. All right. So if you have any income in any kind of real estate, when it gets appraised, they're going to look at what the property is bringing in. All right. It's going to contribute to the value. Simple. All right. Uh, One other thing on subject two the whole goal about taking the subject two is you take it over right now. You get the place fixed up. You get it be worth more money. Then you pay off that loan and get your own loan and maybe pocket some money in the process. All right. Uh, shout out Nate Johnson. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Big Ben. I got five three-family rentals. Each one has a cap rate above 23%. Ooh. Would it be a good idea to 1031 them all into a Calm property with 24 commercial. Oh, uh, what is that? 24.6%. Listen, if you could find those kind of cap rates of returns, I, that's unheard of. So, you know, I mean, 23%, it sounds like if you can just refinance it, you should be able to pull a bunch of money out of it and do the other deal, you know? So I wouldn't be so quick to even think about selling something that's getting you a cap rate of 23%. You know what that means? That means. And if you had a property that's worth, if you, know, you take those three family rentals and they're worth a million bucks, you're telling me you're getting $230,000 a year. That's unheard of. So you're better off trying to get loans against them and uh, and taking that money and doing another deal. But I don't know where you're finding those kind of returns. You need to go to benmal.com slash shop, get me on the phone and tell me so I can join you. All right, shout out, Luis. Thank you for the super chat. Shalom, brother Ben. Shalom alechem. How can I get in touch with you regarding a big, big money deal, big baby? Big money deal, baby. I'm up here in the jungle, the NYC, jungle. baby. And if I get you a big deal, would you pay you me? You pay me. You pay me. Uh, you know, listen, if I was a billionaire, I wouldn't go to New York City. I can't handle it. I can't do anything in there. So if the real estate is, if it's not, if it's in New York City, I'm not the guy. It's funny as. 10 other million people in New York City go to, but the point is go to benmal.com and get me on the phone and, uh, you know, we could talk about it, but I always pay somebody if they give me something worth paying them for. But I'm not going to New York. I, things are dying in New York. Things are really bad in New York right now. I read articles every day, but I don't have the stomach. I don't have the people. I can't do it. He's claiming it could be a $60 million whale. 60 million whale, baby! Well, you know, I just closed on a $46 million deal. It was good for me. But anyway, get me on the phone and let's talk about it. I'll, you know, I ain't going to waste your time. If it's something I don't want to do, I don't want to do it. Maybe I know somebody that does. I don't know. You know, but let me know what the deal is. All right. What else? All right. Shout out, Mike. Thank you for the super chat. What is the minimum I should have for my first investment? What would be your process to begin investing in real estate while working a median nine to five job? Working nine to five. I wish I get my wife to work from five to six, get my dinner ready. Uh, <laughs> anyway, listen, the first, the money you need is whatever you, you know, whatever money you got controls the size deal you're going to do. If you're only going to be buying something for a hundred grand, you know, and you're going to need 20 grand down or FHA, maybe you'll be getting for a lot less, you know, but it's, you got to find a deal. You got to line up your money and you got to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. That's the way it works. Minimum, every hundred grand, you're going to need 20 grand. All right. Every hundred grand you go FHA, you might get away with five grand. I mean, you know, it depends what size deal you want to do. The smaller the money you got to work with, the smaller the deal you're going to do.
What else? All right, shout out Nathan. Thank you for your super chat. Hi, Ben. I've been in the hospital for the past 10 months from Australia. Now paraplegic. Your motivation and inspiring helped me change my way of thinking and uh, of thinking and helped a lot. Thank well, you. You know, I'm happy to hear that. And uh, I hope you're you get out of hospital and uh, you know, I hope you know things go well for you. So, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's tough when you have a handicap, but, you know, there's plenty of people in there. Listen, I work with guys that were blind. I don't know how this guy, he used to, he had all these apartments in Oak, in California, and he was blind. But he did it, you know. I mean, you know, so I hope you can do something, and I hope you get ahead, and I hope everything works out for you. All right. Uh, shout out, Prize. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Ben, I have a big condo renovation in Broward area. I'm from the Bronx. Oh, no, Bronx. Need so BX. Some, I don't know if BX is the Bronx. But go ahead. I uh, need somewhere to stay to watch the contractors, con men, aka any long term hotel rooms available. Yes. Thanks for all your knowledge. I mean, right now is the season, you know. So we got the Sheridan Suites on Cypress Creek right in the middle of Fort Lauderdale, right off 95 and right in the center of Broward County. Uh, but, you know, Rates have been going up, and you can call a hotel and ask them what they'll charge. You know, I don't get involved with the operation. The only thing I got brought with is Sheridan Suites in Cypress Creek. You get on the phone with them, and you say, hey, Ben sent me. How much uh, can you give me a place for by the month? You know, if you want by the month, by the week. I don't know. But right now, the rates are online, you know, by the day. But they are. You get two rooms for the price of one, baby. And it's Sheridan Sweet Swipers Creek. You get a full, full living room with a pull-out couch, big screen TV, a nice little wet bar with a microwave, a refrigerator. We'll even throw in a toaster, baby. Or you can buy the breakfast in the lobby. And you got a big bedroom. Uh, you know, it's great. It's a one-bedroom apartment. And the brand new showers and bathrooms in there that Vincent built, and it's great. So go to Sheridan Suites and see what kind of deal you cut. All right, shout out Anthony. Thank you for the super chat. I'm a real estate agent in Illinois. Invest on industrial here. We have the hardest working middle class in the country, and dress industrial is booming here. Booming, baby, booming. All right, well, that's good. So, I mean, thank you for telling us that. But uh, you know, Illinois is too far for me. But I hope you make a lot of money there. Invest in real industrial here. I mean, I want to. I don't know industrial. You know, I'm afraid if I get stuck with an empty industrial place, I want to have to rent it because I never did it. You know, we're just learning retail now. Industrial is a whole other sector of real estate. You got to know your sector, whether it's residential, whether it's multifamily, whether it's retail, whether it's commercial, uh, industrial. Office buildings? Thank God I never bought an office building. I almost bought the damn office building attached to my Holiday Inn in Tampa. Thank God I didn't do it. The poor guy's dying over there. There's buildings like 50% occupied. Everybody's reducing their space. They're letting people work at home so they save money. And uh, I don't know. But offices are getting crushed. And I'm glad I didn't go into it. It's like industrial. I don't know. Right now, industrial is good. But, you know, we'll have some returns. Yep. All right, uh, shout out Daniel Gray. Thank you for the super chat. Ben, where should I park my money to get the 4% plus returns, but still be able to get it quickly if a deal comes along? I mean, every bank is paying up to four and a half. I think I even started a little more today on a money market account. Okay, go to any bank and say, hey, what are you paying on a money market? Look it up online. You know, I mean, so if you need your money quickly, money market. It's free. You can use it anytime you want. And right now, with today's rates being up, the rates are up to six and a half percent. That means the bank's got to pay you more money. So, you know, it's all relative, you know. All right. Shout out, Mike. Thank you for the super chat. Is California worthwhile to invest in if I have a very low budget? Any states or areas you recommend to start in with a low budget? Poor states. I mean, you know, California is a very expensive place, but there are some maybe little pockets of poor places in California. I don't know, but I didn't like. I, I did my time in California. I did. I did all right, but now I don't see numbers making sense there either. But you know, you got to go to places where there's growth. You want to find where there's growth at. Where are they building a big factory? Where's a uh, I don't know uh, some company building something. Follow the home builders. The home builders spend millions of dollars on research to determine where they're going to build that. Go look up the home builders and see where their newest projects are that they're just building right now and trying to sell houses before they're built. And then you'll see where the growth is. But typically, if you're on a low budget, you got to go to the poor states because they're low budget. Ohio, Pennsylvania. I mean, you know, go online and see what deals are like, you know. But I mean, those are the cheapest states I see, even hmm. Illinois. You know, you go to the hood of Detroit, you can buy a house with nothing if you got the balls and a gun. All right. Uh, shout out, JB. Thank you for the super chat. Also, shout out, 
Kakaka, thank you. Kakaka, Ben, you've become very successful. And he's you got some kaka. He's kaka ka. Ben, you've become very successful, and you still smoke Newports and eat White Castle frozen burgers. Has your appetite not changed to want luxury as well? I want everything. You know, listen, you eat what you want. You smoke what you want. Everybody is a human being to do whatever the hell they want. You know, if I hurt myself, well, probably, but, you know, I don't hurt nobody else. He doesn't do it every day, guys. Once I do it whenever my wife's not looking. I eat White Castle. <laughs> doesn't once in a while. I, I hope and pray that she didn't make breakfast and she ran off to a tennis lesson so I can go in there and eat White Castles for breakfast. <laughs> and you pop them in a the goddamn microwave. You open the plastic, you pop them in a the microwave, you do it for a minute and 20 healthy, seconds, honey. and they're delicious. You squirt a little ketchup on it, and I got me a little two-pack White Castle for breakfast. I'm Wait happy. a minute. Let me ask you a question. Did I smoke you a new port when I'm done. right after I just make you that delicious breakfast this morning? I didn't eat nothing after that. I said, when you're not here oh, and okay, you don't okay. make me breakfast, what did that's I make a good you for day. breakfast this morning? Today we had turkey and ground turkey and eggs and some with potatoes. It was very good, you, you know, but it was a little too healthy. I Another like thing we should mention is that there's a lot of people who are out there who are creating fake accounts under your name. So please do not bank oh, yeah, accounts yeah, yeah. or fake accounts. Everybody, fake right accounts. now, go. Uh, I don't do WhatsApp. That's a phony. <laughs> what's up everybody go that? go report real ben mala underscore go report them on instagram i just found their report them. fake account you're being reported <laughs> because you are a fake account all right well you know there's a lot of fraud fake out there i'm sorry but don't give nobody no money don't do nothing unless it's through benmala.com it's fake okay you know instagram is cool and all that stuff but all the people that reply with my face it's not me i don't do whatsapp i don't get into all that stuff they're trying to rope you into something so just you know i might do a check a thumbs up or something but go to benmala.com if you need to get yeah, a we're hold trying of to this. get verified anyway verified, um, verified let's see shout out colby verified thank you for the super chat Ben, do you know anything about wholesale real estate? Is it worth my time? I mean, you know, it depends. If you're going to go and find deals, you know, and convince people to put the new tie on the property, and you think you're tying it up for a price that's less than the market will pay, fine. You know, if you can make money, you make money. I've seen deals from wholesalers that were brought to me where the wholesaler is probably making 10, 20 grand on it. But I felt I could make 50 or 100. It's a good deal. Anything works if the numbers work. It's all about the numbers. Do the numbers make sense? Okay. I don't care if it's on the market, wholesale, uh, auction. It doesn't matter. Is it, does it make any sense? Does the numbers make sense? Can anybody make any money on it? So try it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You know, I don't know where you find people when you wholesale, but they must have techniques that they use. You know, people die every day. Uh, people get sick. They got to sell their property. People, uh, whatever. They want to retire, move away, find a deal. All right. Shout out. Uh, life is short. Thank you for the super chat. I have a seller financing deal for a 24 BD previous medical facility. How can I generate income? Transitional housing or travel nurses, temporary housing? You know, when you say 24 bed, I don't know if you're talking about a nursing home. I mean, the point is this. If you can give somebody in a lot of areas where there's a demand, a place to lay their head safely, clean, and comfortable, you could charge your port. All right? I don't know if you got kitchens. What do they do to cook and eat? You know, all these things have to be taken. Is there a demand for you filling the place up? Are they going to have privacy? Are they going to have a private bathroom? Are they going to have a place to cook and eat? You know, what are you giving them? You get what you give. The less you give, the less you get. The more you give, the more you get. Like a full one-bedroom apartment is going to pay you a big rent. I don't know. It depends where the property is at, what you're giving people, and if there's a demand for the people to stay in your type of housing. Now, if we're San Francisco, I'd say, hell yeah. People will rent a fucking closet in San Francisco and pay you. You know, stick a, get a walk-in closet, you stick a little fridge in there, and, <laughs> and they live in a closet. I've had students, you know, that would put so many kids in a goddamn room. They, I, I opened the closet once, and there was a kid sleeping in a damn big closet. You know, and the guy that was renting uh, for me was subletting his closet out to another kid. That's crazy. <laughs> it's life. All right, uh, shout out, Jimmy. Thank you for the super chat. Shalom. Shalom. Ben, what do I need to do for an FHA loan? You need to go and apply okay you go to the bank you go to a broker you go online even 
Everybody does them. And you apply. You tell them who you are, what you got. You fill out the application, and they tell you how much money they're willing to loan you. Simple. Do it tonight. Get online and file an application for FHA. And you should both, they'll tell you how much money down you're going to need. Typically, it's 3500 bucks for every 100 grand. Anything right. else, Aaron? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got more? Like four more. All four right. More. Uh, shout out Beyond the Wild. Thank you for the super chat. Shout out Ackley. Thank you also for the super chat. Uh, I want to build a single family home to rent out. Should I tell the bank I will live in it to save on the down payment or not worth the risk? Listen. If you're building it, you can't live in it, right, while you're building it. Nobody can. So I think as a construction loan, you know, talk to the bank. Say, listen, you know, I want to build a house. If, you, if you're building it for yourself, you're building it. I don't think it's going to matter because they're loaning you money to build it. It's a construction loan. You know, what you do with it later, I don't think it really matters. Uh, if they're going to give you a load down because you, it's going to be a personal residence, I don't know. Talk to the bank and see what they say. But you can intend to live in it, you know, and there's no law against changing your mind. So, you know, do whatever you can to get the lowest amount down and the best interest rate, you know, but it's a construction loan, it sounds like to me, or a 203. All right. 203, you got to live in it. So That's you got to live in it. Shout out Mike H. Thank should you for the roommate. super chat. Also, shout out Sutton. Thank you for the super chat. Have you ever invested in trailer homes Ooh. or trailer parks? Have you heard of Ooh. good returns on this investment class? Would you refinance or use a HELOC if using the funds to purchase another property? So two questions. Number one, HELOCs are typically for your personal residence. You could do a commercial line of credit. I'm trying to do that right now. But trailer homes, trailer parks, it's all about supply and demand. Yes, I've looked at trailer parks. Have I ever bought one? No. Why? Because I couldn't find one where the numbers made sense. But, you know, it's a business. You know, it's just like multifamily housing, except you ain't going to worry about typically if they own the trailer home, then you're off the hook for fixing anything and they're just paying you a lot rent every month and they got to pay for the utilities and that's it. It's all about how much you're paying per space. Now, if you own the trailer home, then it's no different than a damn apartment. You're renting them out a trailer home or renting them out a house and you're responsible for the ship breaks. And there you go. It's all about how much you're paying for it and how much money it's going to bring in. But, yes, there are guys that have made tons of money in trailer homes. I was thinking about finding a piece of land and making my own. How hard could it be? You cut out a piece of square. You put some goddamn asphalt down. You stub up the electric. You maybe have to run the sewer lines so they can pump out. And there you go. You're done. All right, shout out Alex. Hey, Ben, do you own any real estate in Winter Park, Florida? I own two rentals here. I used to. Winter Park or Winter Garden? Winter Park. Winter Park, which one? I'm wondering. There's two. I always get Winter Park mixed up with Winter Garden and Winter Haven. I think I was in the bottom. I was in Winter Haven. But Winter Park's near Fort Lauderdale. I won't shit all over there. I, you know, close by there. You know, also, can I be your realtor? MLO. Yeah, you can be my realtor. Send me a goddamn deal. It makes sense so I can make some money. Anybody can be my realtor. I don't care who you are. You don't even have to be a realtor to help me. You can go to binmouth.com, ask Ben at binmouth.com, send me something, or follow, pass it on to me. If it looks good and makes sense, then I'll contact you and we'll do the deal. You know, but you know, it's gotta be a real deal. It's gotta be sizable. Don't send me a house, you know, for a hundred grand, it's worth a hundred quarter. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> All right, shout out. Good day. Thank you for the super chat. Ben is the man. If he cannot do it, no, no one, one can. can. I think we used to, that used to be a saying. Ben is the man. If he can't do it, no one can. Well, you know, I make a lot of mistakes too. And hopefully people can learn from my mistakes, you know, and uh, just keep trying to do what you can. Then you'll be the man. What else? We done? I want to eat. I want to eat. Two, two more. more. Okay. Two more. All right, shout out, Anthony. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, hey, Ben, would you be open to working out a deal for me to set up some electric vehicle charging stations at your hotels? If so, best contact you. Listen, you can contact us at Ben, ask ben at benmail.com. Yeah, the email. Rafal will then push it off to uh, Ben Jr. Yep. Ben Jr. will look at it, and then he'll deal – and we'll deal with the property managers at the hotels. We already started doing it in a lot of hotels. You might be late, but we're always open to, to hear about things that can improve our property and make us money. So shoot us an email. That's Ben at BenMal.com. Yeah, shout out to uh, CRR Construction. Same thing goes for you. Just shoot us an email, and then we will get back to you. Um, the next one you missed was about PIP conversions. I can go back. 
Go back. It was a good one. It's about pick conversions. Ooh, All right. One, wrong one. Wrong one. Let's see. Oh, Here we boy. go. Uh, CR, hey, man, let's save you some money. We've been renovating hotels for over 20 years. We help investors save money on PIP lists and conversions. Very good. I'm always loyal. We can give you bids on shit. Give me a bid on replacing. I want to change the entire lobby. All right? And these are big lobbies in Tampa and Fort Lauderdale. Okay? They're huge lobbies with 100-foot atrium ceilings. I want to change the floor. The floor is outdated. And then we can talk about the PIP that I still got to do. Well, I don't have a PIP in Tampa anymore. Happy to carry that. We're still working on a PIP in Fort Lauderdale, but Vincent did most of the hard work. Now we're just done the furniture and flooring. If you can help with the flooring, get a hold of us. And uh, we'll definitely, you know, we'll tell you what we want to do. You give us a price and show us who you are. But, you know, it's all got to be Marriott approved, you know, and all that stuff. Yep. And then, uh, Colby, thank you for Super Chat again. What sunglasses do you wear? I like them. I'm wearing, these are old. These are Louis Vuittons, baby. Louis Vuittons. They're really the most comfortable. I got all the other stuff, but, you know, these are my favorite ones. They're most comfortable. All right. Anything else we done for tonight? All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, folks. If you're down in Miami, meet us at the boat show. We'll be walking around looking for a hot deal yep. and pissing sellers off or lowballing. <laughs> We're going to lowball. So good luck, good night, and adios amigos.